that's, that's a great fight. That fight it has to happen. Who else is he going to fight now? He's, he wants to fight in Britain. Um, who else is there? The Canelo Alvarez versus Chris Eubank Jr. fight has been reportedly announced. After defeating Liam Smith in a rematch in September 2023, Eubank Jr. has not competed since and is currently a promotional free agent. The British fighter has consistently expressed his desire to challenge for the world title and had even organized a fight with Terence Crawford, but negotiations broke down. Reports, however, suggest that Eubank Jr. is shockingly in the lead to face the undefeated 168-pound champion Alvarez. Apparently, there's a new front runner to fight Canelo Alvarez, and it's looking like it could be Chris Eubank Jr. They're in negotiations. According to ESPN's Salvador Rodriguez, discussions are already in progress, positioning him as the leading candidate over other contenders like Edgar Berlanga and Jermal Charlo. It was anticipated that Alvarez would make his yearly comeback on September 14th, which falls on the weekend of Mexican Independence Day. However, this plan might be delayed to avoid conflicting with the UFC's scheduled event at the Sphere, a new venue in Las Vegas, which Dana White is aiming to hold on September 14th. Eubank Jr. has consistently aimed to take on the top competitor in the pound-for-pound -pound division, but has consistently lost to opponents. He might find find himself with an unexpected chance that could catapult his career to new heights, potentially emerging as a stunning and undisputed champion. Undoubtedly, the Mexican would be the favorite to retain his titles, yet the Briton, known for his resilience, could deliver a stellar performance if he brings his A-game. Get it on, man. You know, let's, let's do this. You need to be tested. And you're not going to fight your Mexicans. I'm English and Jamaican, so you can fight me. You know, this, this chalk is, 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 is very, it's very plain. Discussions about Alvarez's upcoming fight have been notably subdued since the 33-year-old champion successfully defended his titles against Jaime Mungia over the Cinco de Mayo weekend. With any training camp scheduled to start before the end of the month, it now looks as though his status may be made clear in the upcoming weeks. Next Gen has never held the title of world champion in his professional career and has made it clear what his main goal is to accomplish before retiring. He has been waiting months for a fight with with Conor Ben, his domestic rival, but it seems that we'll have to wait for the time being. Chris Eubank Sr., a boxing icon, has endorsed a bout against Canelo as the defining moment to secure his son's legacy in the ring. He told TalkSport, Let's get to the point. Canelo is the only person he's going to be able to fight now to redeem any type of respect from the fighting public. Real fighters, real boxing people. I know how you win respect. It's not beating Liam Smith. Although it looks like Alvarez will not be facing his longtime nemesis David Benavidez anytime soon, fans are eager to see him do so. In 2025, a highly anticipated clash with Crawford might materialize, contingent on his victory over Eubank Jr. Saudi boxing chief Turkey Alalshik has expressed keen interest in hosting this momentous event. However, Eubank Sr. added, Junior, this is what my view is. Your saving grace is going to be Canelo. You're never going to get back down to 160 pounds. I won't allow that to happen anyway. You're a 168 pounds fighter. Canelo is your way to win respect, and you cannot beat him, not Canelo. The only way you can beat him is if daddy is next to you. That's it. Chris Eubank Jr. stands a strong chance of being selected by Canelo Alvarez for his upcoming September bout, boosted by Dana White's decision to schedule a UFC event on September 14th, coinciding with the Mexican Independence Day weekend. Canelo might opt to delay his next bout for a few weeks to face Eubank Jr. in England this September. This matchup promises to draw a substantial crowd set against the vibrant backdrop of London, UK. While it may not fill Wembley Stadium, it's expected to sell a significant number of tickets for the arena. Canelo is contemplating facing Edgar Berlanga, his WBA mandatory challenger, as another potential opponent for his next bout. The fight would ideally take place in the US around a significant holiday, possibly September 14th. However, choosing Berlanga may not be the best option for Canelo due to various other factors. Fans are skeptical about 27-year-old Berlanga's readiness for a world title title shot, insisting he must defeat a top-tier opponent first to prove himself. Thus far, he hasn't faced such competition. Pauli Malinagi said, With the combination of the UFC going on Mexican Independence Day weekend, it may push Canelo out of Las Vegas. In that situation, it may push the Berlanga fight away. Although Berlanga doesn't rate the fight, his supporters in New York won't be pleased that he won't be fighting, and Canelo shouldn't have to handle the fallout from picking him. While Canelo focuses on his bout with Eubank Jr., Berlanga's promoter Eddie Hearn could elevate his credibility by hitting him against formidable opponents such as Caleb Plant, Jaime Mungia, David Benavidez, Christian Mambili, or David Morell Jr. Melina 
Mahdi added, If you fight in the United States, Berlanga is the more viable opponent. He's more popular. Eubank doesn't have a lot of popularity in the US. If you go to Europe, you fight Eubank in England. I could see that possibility opening up, and I could see where he's going with this. In September, Canelo has limited choices for his next fight, unless he considers fighters from the 160 pounds weight class like Eubank Jr., who would be stepping up. Exploring other contenders from that division could satisfy fans without a doubt. According to Malina Aji, England would love to have a Canelo Alvarez. To me, those boxing fans are the best in the world. Even if he were fighting their local guy, obviously, they would root for Eubank, but they would still be privileged and in awe to have one of boxing's stars choose their place to fight. London presents an ideal venue for Canelo's next bout, promising a flurry of excitement and anticipation. Despite Eubank Jr. nearing the twilight of his career, fans remain eager to witness the spectacle of him facing Canelo. As per Malina Aji, Donna White sits for nobody, Canelo sits for him. If you look at the UFC schedule, they're doing that again in September. You could see Canelo taking his act on the road to England, where he would obviously be welcomed with open arms. The English love their boxing and their superstar fighters. Canelo must adjust to white scheduling events on American soil during Mexican holidays to capitalize on the viewership of passionate fans. While fighting a crowd favorite like David Benavidez, he could retain his September slot, but facing Berlanga, who mainly resonates in certain parts of New York City, wouldn't be as feasible. Moreover, Chris Eubank Jr. is ecstatic following his recent partnership with Boxer, foreseeing major showdowns with boxing giants like Canelo Alvarez, Terence Crawford, and Conor Benn in his near future. Eubank Jr. stands as one of two contenders under Canelo's consideration for his upcoming defense of the undisputed super middleweight title in September. Should this matchup materialize, it promises to be a colossal event, drawing significant attention both stateside and across the pond, likely commanding PPV audiences in the US and UK alike. At 34 years old, Eubank Jr. stands at a crucial juncture in his career, recognizing the fleeting nature of time in professional boxing. Having witnessed a decline in his skills and energy since his peak years between 2015 and 2019, he faces a press need to secure significant bouts while his competitive edge remains. Chris Eubank Jr. will need to shift his focus away from Terence Crawford, as the undefeated Nebraskan has set his sights on boxing's ultimate prize, a showdown with Canelo Alvarez. Following his upcoming challenge for the WBA junior middleweight title against Israel Madrimov on August 3rd in Los Angeles, Crawford has little interest in pursuing aging opponents. Eubank Jr.'s potential rematch with Billy Joe Saunders might not generate as much buzz among fans. Saunders, a former two-division world champion has been notably inactive since his lucrative bout with Canelo on May 8, 2021, showing little ambition in recent years. Saunders suffered a defeat via an eighth-round knockout and has since been absent from the ring. A potential bout between Eubank Jr. and Saunders might pique the interest of older British fans, yet it could fail to captivate the younger audience, who may see the 34-year-olds as veterans aiming to capitalize on their careers before retiring from the sport. Conor Benn, the welterweight contender, isn't currently igniting the excitement of fans in the UK or globally. His recent performances following a suspension have been lackluster, suggesting a decline in his former prowess despite being only 27. The buzz surrounding Ben's fights has notably diminished compared to his earlier career, indicating a shift in public interest. Chris Eubank Jr. said in a press release recently, There are four or five different names out there that are mega fights that everybody wants to see. Canelo Alvarez, Terence Crawford, Conor Ben, Billy Joe Saunders. Since 2010, Canelo Alvarez has headlined a fight card on Mexican Independence Day weekend eight times. Apart from a brief contract dispute and the lockdown, he consistently honored this tradition annually from 2016 to 2022. As the UFC prepares for a September 14th event at the Las Vegas Sphere, possibly featuring Conor McGregor, Alvarez seems likely to relinquish the date for the second year in a row. Recently, boxing officials familiar with the situation oversept. 14 said, it's up to Alvarez and Reynoso how to proceed. Hall of Fame commentator and veteran cornerman Teddy Atlas mentioned on Deep Waters that bringing the event to London would be the strategic choice. He emphasized that the goal is to attract the largest audience, suggesting that if Mexican Independence Day is not an option, London should be the alternative. Alvarez, who turns 34 on July 18th, is clearly liked by Atlas as opposed to either Eubank or Berlanga. Atlas remarked that the only potential challenge for Canelo is the passage of time. If Canelo Canelo starts to age and his performance declines. He noted that while Canelo is showing some signs of decline, he remains the sport's major draw with the privilege to set his own terms. According to Atlas, Eubank and Berlanga are the closest contenders, but Canelo will 
always have the advantage because of his status as the top earner. After learning of the planned Alvarez Eubank Jr. showdown, boxing promoter Eddie Hearn offered his perspective on the unexpected development. Berlanga's representative, the chairman of Matchroom Boxing, claimed the bout was just a money grab by the British. In a recent interview, Hearn discussed his opinions on the possible super middleweight title fight with Boxing News. Hearn expressed his opinion, stating that he believes a welterweight Conor Ben would defeat Eubank Jr. He added that although Eubank is determined, he is also wise enough to realize he cannot compete with Canelo Alvarez at 168 pounds. However, Hearn acknowledged that if the financial incentive is significant, Eubank would take the fight and wished him luck if he manages to secure it. Meanwhile, Hearn mentioned their focus on promoting Edgar Berlanga, the WBA mandatory contender, describing him as a strong super middleweight with significant punching power, highlighting the potential for a Mexico versus Puerto Rico matchup. Chris Eubank Jr. faced a devastating loss on June 7, 2021, as his younger brother Sebastian tragically passed away from a sudden heart attack in Dubai. Sky News reported that Sebastian, unaware of his pre-existing heart condition, succumbed unexpectedly. In a statement at the time, Next Gen expressed his sorrow and that it was the first time he had sobbed since he was 12. The former interim WBA middleweight champion posted a heartfelt remembrance of his brother Sebastian Eubank on X on the third anniversary of his tragedy. He wrote, It's a blessing to have things in your life that make you truly happy. Messages from my nephew are some of those special things. His father passed away three years ago today, and Rahim makes the pain of that loss so much easier to deal with. So I thank God for him, and I pray God's watching over my brother until the day we meet again. Meanwhile, Chris Eubank Jr., in Kale Sauerland's opinion, is a more deserving rival for Saul Canelo Alvarez. After hearing about Alvarez's recent victories, Sauerland from Eubank Jr.'s promoters Wasserman reached out to Alvarez's team to explore the possibility of tempting the Mexican fighter into another bout against a British challenger. Sauerland said, Absolutely, Eubank. If you look at it in terms of a fight, would be a great opponent for Canelo. But I also think it's a commercially very interesting fight for Canelo, because Canelo would unlock the UK market obviously with an opponent like Eubank. Eubank now wishes to make a bold move by taking on Canelo Alvarez, one of the greatest boxers of his generation. He believes that fighting Alvarez would be wise. He said, Canelo goes where the money is and I can't think of any bigger money fights than me versus Canelo. I know he wants to fight in the UK. It's a huge market. There's not many guys there that people would like to see fight more than me and Canelo Alvarez. With his trademark calculation, Eubank Jr. has his sights set on the undisputed super middleweight title. Despite the tempting potential payday, he acknowledges that securing this fight remains uncertain. He added, it's hard to target him. You can't target Canelo Alvarez. Whenever he wants to come and fight, he'll fight. He'll look at the options and do what he wants. In nearly every Every previous rivalry, Eubank regarded himself as the A-side. Not against Canelo, though. He added, he does make the rules. He does what he wants. He moves up in weight. He comes down in weight. He holds belts in different divisions. And he does all the things that other fighters could just never do. Alvarez has triumphed over a series of British challengers, ranging from Liam Smith and Amir Khan to Callum Smith and Billy Joe Saunders, and most recently, John Ryder. But Eubank Jr. insisted, they call him the Brit Slayer. And people know I'm not going to go down without a fight. I'm not going to get in there and freeze up. With the need to step back up to 168 pounds for another shot at the world title, Eubank Jr. embraces the chance with newfound confidence. He expressed, I'm going to go out there and take it to him. That's what people want to see and that's the fights he needs to be in. Whether he'll accept a fight like that is to be seen. Naturally, Eubank Jr. has a plethora of other possibilities. Many others will be vying to box him just as he's calling for a battle with Canelo. He added, I'm in the power position now. Everybody wants a piece now. It's insane how fickle the sport is. But the truest quote of all when it comes to boxing is, you're only good as your last fight. When I just lost, that's what I was as good as. A loser. Now I've backed it up. It was like, Eubank's on his way out. He's done. We're never going to hear from him again. And now, I'm the no one guy. Meanwhile, it appears that if Canelo faces Eubank Jr. next, it may well be very beneficial for Terence Crawford. In the not too distant future, Saudi boxing chief Chi Turkey Alalshik hopes to host a super fight between Canelo and Crawford in Riyadh in preparation for his August 3rd fight in Los Angeles against WBA super welterweight champion Israel Madrimov, Bud is training with He Alalshik. If he emerges from that battle unscathed, a highly anticipated matchup with Canelo might follow. The fight is scheduled to happen in either December or January, according to He Alalshik. Eubank Jr. is emerging as the leading contender to face Canelo in his upcoming September bout, with Edgar Berlanga also being considered as a viable alternative. Crawford, who trains with Eubank Jr., will be hoping Canelo chooses the form. Seeing talks that they're in talks and Eubank is the front runner for this fight. Front runner, bro. We could actually get Big Collars and Canelo Alvarez across the table from each other. 
And I'll be honest. How I'll does be honest. The... Go on. I'll be honest. I want it. I want the fight. I want this fight. Prior to his own appointment with the Mexican superstar, Eubank Jr. will be able to provide the American with a wealth of inside information if he wins the fight. Trainer of both guys, Brian Bomack McIntyre, will profit from developing a strategy to take on Canelo twice in a row. Bomack has been Crawford's trainer for his whole professional career. In September of last year, he trained Eubank Jr. in preparation for Crawford's rematch with Liam Smith. Eubank Jr. has frequently switched trainers, having trained with a variety of coaches including Roy Jones, Jr., Ronnie Davies, Adam Booth, and his own father, Chris Eubank. However, his impressive comeback under McIntyre, where he decisively dismantled Smith after a crushing stoppage loss eight months earlier, underscores Bomack's suitability for the role, ensuring he will once again lead for his upcoming bout. Here's where we do what we do, bro. Yeah? Mm. And we can't even stay too long uh, for the rest of the pod, but here this year. What did Eubank Sr. say that Junior needs to do to redeem himself in his eyes? Of all the things that was on the table, the Conor Ben fight was floating around. He said, if he fights Canelo Alvarez, he'll have my respect. As contenders like Chris Eubank Jr. bat their eyelashes at Canelo in hopes of securing a September bout, the undisputed super middleweight champion is already looking ahead to a potential super fight next May. Regardless of whether Eubank is chosen over Jermal Charlo or Edgar Berlanga, Canelo Alvarez is focused on his annual Cinco de Mayo fight next year. He aims to face Terence Crawford on Mexico's most significant public holiday. That could disappoint David Benavidez and many fans who were anticipating an exciting Mexican showdown, but there would be immense interest in a matchup between two pound-for-pound all-time greats. Crawford is undoubtedly the standout welterweight of our time, but stepping up to face a fully-fledged super middleweight would be a monumental challenge. Known for his natural southpaw stance and incredible precision, his accuracy is unmatched in the boxing world today. He skillfully inches ahead, catching you off guard with rapid, precise strikes. Beginning with a jab, he follows through by sinking a left into the midsection before unleashing a powerful right hook capable of knocking your head clean off. Crawford possesses a rare ability to consistently land three or four punches with maximum power, a feat few can achieve. Unlike many skilled fighters who use the first two shots as setup punches, Crawford delivers each blow with maximum force, distinguishing him from his peers. From 147 to 168, and the win become undisputed? Wow. I wanna go up to 68. So, yeah. so who would you fight at 68, Canelo? If he, well, yeah, if he win or wow. Charlo, the winner. Wow, I want that would be crazy. I want to be three time undisputed. He is a combatant with several facets. It would be fascinating to observe how he handles Canelo's vigor and forcefulness. Canelo isn't known for his speed, but he packs a powerful punch, maintains good balance, and can absorb hits well. He typically overwhelms opponents with his combinations, but facing Crawford will require a different approach. Outboxing isn't likely to work against Crawford, so Canelo will need to adopt a more aggressive strategy, attempting to hunt him down and assert dominance. However, no one has successfully executed this against Crawford yet. Nevertheless, it's a significant victory for Crawford, who has never faced a foe as strong and dangerous as Alvarez. Crawford can, though, if anyone can. The allure lies in witnessing two Hall of Famers in a catchweight bout, reminiscent of fights that were once commonplace a century ago. Truthfully, I couldn't predict with certainty who might emerge victorious, and that's the beauty of it. Terence Crawford seems to have abandoned his pursuit of the undisputed title across three divisions, opting out of what could have been a lucrative showdown against Saul Canelo Alvarez for the 168-pound super middleweight title. Recently, Canelo himself dismissed his name, arguing the weight difference was too significant. Now, Bud has shown reluctance to move up a division, stating he won't force a fight as the mandatory challenger, no matter the circumstances. If Crawford had fought in the 1980s, he likely would have risen through the ranks quickly, much like Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard did. He would have defeated all contenders, earning himself a shot against the top Mexican fighters. However, Canelo continues to overlook him, leading Crawford to seemingly lose hope. I don't need to take that fight because everybody's gonna say this too small, it's too small, it's too small, and then, you know, he, uh, he needs to enjoy his fight. Okay, he deserves it. Many pundits speculate that Crawford simply wants to move up from welterweight in pursuit of a lucrative retirement payday, aiming to do so swiftly without demonstrating that his skill remains at its peak, despite a significant pound-for-pound -pound earnings opportunity. Canelo also moved up to welterweight, but unlike Bud, he successfully defeated top-tier opponents like David Morrell Jr. and Caleb Plant to reach this level. Crawford should prioritize facing similar caliber opponents first, rather than seeking favors from Canelo. At 
this stage, Crawford doesn't pose a genuine threat to the Mexican fighter. Any victory over him would likely be attributed to the substantial weight difference between them. In addition, Bud is 36 years old, past his prime, and seeking large sums of money to cement his legacy. A matchup versus Jaron, Boots Ennis in his own division, in the opinion of some experts, is more likely unless he deems it too dangerous for him. Another potential adversary could be Chris Eubank, though Brian McIntyre, trainer of the undisputed welterweight champion, strongly dismissed it as fake news. Crawford would be making a significant step as he attempts to establish himself in new divisions. But McIntyre thinks Eubank Jr. is just playing along with the current trend and there hasn't been any talk about this fight. I, I like Spence, but uh, you know, I like Spence and all the respect for him and everything, but I knew. I knew. I think is uh, the 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 type of type of fight of uh, Terrence Crawford is is fighter is 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 different. Uh, 168. But uh, like I say, like he say, uh, nobody's gonna give me credit for right, that. Thank you very much. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.